Welcome to Breakout Podcast and Breakout Church, a prophetic church in the heart of Cleveland, Ohio, with a mission for revival, intercession, and prophetic release. Thank you for listening, and make sure you get connected with us online. And if you are in Cleveland, pay us a visit. Okay, we are going to go into the message. Enjoy and be blessed. Father God, I just thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I just pray and I thank you, Lord God, for everything that you're doing in this season. Everything that you're doing in this hour. I thank you, Lord God, for blessing everyone coming onto the line. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Lisa Dengel, God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Kimberly Johnson, Sister Deborah. I thank you for touching our lives in Jesus' name. God bless you, Sister Shanae. Hallelujah. Sometimes I got to remind myself, you guys, we're not coming on here to have a show. We're not coming on here to make a production. Now, we have a production in order to do something. The, the purpose of the production is order to connect with God, to connect with each other. But we're not here to put on a show. We are here to connect with the Lord, to hear what He has to say. Shoko, let's just take a moment to pray and get our hearts in the right place to hear what God has to say to us today. Shoko Rabo Sotoko. Shoko Rabo Sotoko. I told the Lord, I said, Lord God, I'm going into ministry and I want to serve your purpose. I want to hear your voice, but I want the real thing. I want nothing less than the real thing. There's a lot of fake stuff out here. We don't want the fake stuff, Lord. We want the real stuff. We want to get rid of the fluff. Hallelujah. Shoko Rabo Soto. Hallelujah. Only you can satisfy, satisfy us, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Shoko Rabo Soto. Only you can satisfy us, Lord. Help us not to forget, Father God, what this is about. Help us not to forget, Lord God, that you want to touch our lives. You want to heal our bodies, Lord God, that you want to affect the world around us, that you want to change some things, Lord God. Help us not to be sworn in by formality. Help us, Father God, not to become complacent. Help us, Lord God, not to uh, get stuck in the rut of religion. Keep us flexible. Hallelujah. I just hear the Holy Spirit. I hear the Lord say, I am keeping you flexible. Everything that's going on in your life right now is prescribed for your promotion. Hallelujah. Shoko Rabo. So that's for somebody. I hear the Lord say, I'm keeping you flexible. I'm keeping you needable in my hands. I'm keeping you soft in a world that has sought to harden you in a world that has sought to freeze you in a world that has sought to delay trample and harden your heart I hear the Lord say that he's keeping you flexible soft needable moldable because he's not done making you there's many different things that he's going to begin to implement into your life from this moment forward. He desires for us to be needable and flexible and soft every single day of our life, every day of our life. We were talking last week about God uh, wanting to break us, break our mindset, break our perspectives. And I hear the Lord saying that He desires for us to be soft every single day of our life. Did you know that there is a time in every person's life, every man and every woman's life where 
they begin to become hardened in their ways. Psychology and some science says that once someone becomes hardened in their ways and in their personality, then a lot of those things can't be changed. But I know a Bible, I know a word that says that God will take the hardened heart. Hallelujah. He will take the stony heart and make it into a heart of the flesh. And that's a miracle. And that's what God wants to do in many of our lives. <clears throat> he wants to take the stony heart. He wants to make it into a heart of flesh so that he can continue to mold us. He needs flesh in his hands or flesh representing something soft, something needable, something able to be manipulated. He wants to manipulate us for his purposes when the world seeks to manipulate us for their purposes. Hallelujah. I've been writing on these things all weekend. I've been trying to take advantage of the opportunity here and the freedom that we have to get some work done. And I've been able to finish uh, a couple of books, uh, updates and stuff like that. But talking about God wanting to conform us to his word, conform us to the mind of Christ, that we not be conformed to the ways and in the mind, in the thinking of the world. Hallelujah. With that, we're going to go into the word. If you guys have your Bible, I want you to grab it. Grab your Bible. We're going to go right into the Word. And I want you guys to go to Genesis chapter 12, verses 1. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1. We're going to talk about vision. We're going to talk about perspective. We're going to talk about some of the things the vision and the perspective that God wants to begin to change in us. Last week, we talked about the fact that God wants to break our vision. He wants to break our perspective. He wants to break our theology, and He wants to give us His. Uh, some of us are believing God for vision going into these next season. We're believing God for perspective. This is an hour for download. This is an hour where God is uh, pouring things into us, and we want to know how to hold and carry those things. But most of all, we want to be able to know how to hear the word of the Lord. I'm going to give you guys uh, three different ways that God wants to speak to you. Three different ways that God wants to speak to you. And then I'm also going to show you part of what I believe God is doing in this season as he's trying to release a new vision to us in the midst of everything that's going on. Uh, last week we talked about the fact that God doesn't release new vision on top of old perspective. We used the analogy concerning having glasses on. If you guys can notice, I'm, I'm, I'm not wearing my glasses right now. I was able to finally order my contacts, but I've got contacts in. Last week, I was wearing glasses, and I, I want you guys to understand what perspective is and how God wants to shift and change our perspective. But there's some things that we have to do first before God can begin to shift and change our perspective. One of the things that we have to do is we've got to take off the old perspective. Come on, we've got to allow God in in order to break down our thinking so that he can replace our old, ugly, dried out thinking with his thinking. Some of us may think that we have it all figured out. Some of us may think that we've got the answers. Well, let me burst your bubble. We don't. I'll be the first one to say that I don't. Every day I wake up in the morning, I'm relying on God's thinking. I'm relying on the mind of Christ to come in and show me what I need to do in my day. Every night before I go to bed, I'm relying on God's thinking. I'm believing God that he's releasing new thinking in my sleep. I'm believing that he's, he's uh, releasing dreams and visions in order to reframe the way that I think about things because I know that my thinking is small. My thinking is always going to be limited, but his thinking is perfect. His thinking is big. The Bible says that Christ, God says, I know the plans that I have for you and they are for good and they're not for evil. So we want to be able to uh, free our minds before God can begin to release that greater vision, where he can begin to release that new way of thinking that he wants to introduce to us. Our entire world is in the process of a reformation. Our entire culture is in the process of a change. Our entire church is in the middle of a shift as God is changing the way that we see things. He's changing the way that we think about church. He's changing the way that we think about the world around us. I guarantee you we're going to go into this next season in a new place, doing things 
in a way that we've never done them before, seeing things in ways that we've never seen them before. I'm believing God that the church, the face of our church culture has changed. I'm believing God that we're going to go into some new places in him that he's been waiting to release to us. The Bible says that humility comes before honor. And this is a great season of humility for many. What does that mean? Well, that means that there's great honor that's going to follow up this season. Somebody help me. Hallelujah. Shoko Rabo Soto. Hallelujah. So with that being said, God said to us last week that if he was to heal our perspective, if he was to give us his vision right now, a uh, physical vision, if he was to heal my eyes and I still had my glasses on, the first thing I would see would be distortion. The first thing I would see would be distortion. Things would become blurry. Well, why would I see distortion? Why would things become blurry to me? Well, they would become blurry to me because I never took off the old perspective. How many know that if you uh, tried to put glasses on top of context, it's going to be blurry. If you try to put contacts on eyes that have 20-20 vision, it's going to be blurry. It doesn't do you enough justice just to receive the corrected vision, but you must first get rid of and have the old vision broken down. So God is trying to change our way of thinking. We've got to get rid of some old perspective. We've got to get rid of, somebody's got to get rid of some old ways that they see church. Somebody's got to get rid of some old ways that they see their relationships. Come on. Somebody's got to get rid of some old ways that they see family. Somebody's got to get rid of some old ways that they see marriage. God wants to introduce to you his way of seeing things. And the first place that God begins to release vision is in his word. The first level of vision is the word of God. I'm going to do a little bit of teaching this, this morning and this afternoon. Genesis 12 verses 1 through 7 and it says, Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. Them that bless you and curse him that curseth you. And in you all of the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. Praise the Lord. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came, and Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Seshem unto the plain of Moreh, and the Canaanite was there in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thee and unto thy seed I will give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Now really quickly, we're talking about vision here. Uh, those of you guys who are watching, you're getting a treat because this is a very blessed teaching. Uh, some of you guys may have even heard some parts of this teaching. The Lord uh, moved on me this morning and said that he wanted me to go in here and teach on this subject because last week we were talking about vision. Come on, guys. I'm not just trying to uh, have church here. We're trying to get some answers. We're trying to see what God is saying to us. First of all, if we look at the story here uh, concerning Abraham, the first thing God says to him before he can release vision to him, he says to him, get out. I'm not talking about the movie Get Out, but he says, get out, Abraham, you get out. You get out and leave. Why did he say that? He, Abraham had to leave the old place. He had to leave the old perspective. Some of us are caught in the way that we were taught. I said that last week. Some of us are caught in the way that we were taught. In other words, Abraham was raised in a land that taught him their ways. Uh, Abraham's land actually was a place where they did idol worship, where he was from, his hometown, was where they worshiped the stars and they worshiped idols. So Abraham was taught in that way. He was raised in that way. Now, Abraham 
had a connection with the Lord, obviously, but there were some parts of his thinking that God was desiring to reform. And the first thing he says to Abraham before he can begin to release the new vision to him, he says, leave. Get out of that old way of thinking. Get out of that culture. Get out of that place that's trying to conform how you think, how you live your life and what you do. And step into a place where I can begin to lead and guide your thinking. I can begin to lead and guide you based off of how I am wanting you to think. Hallelujah. Based off of how I am wanting you to uh, step into my vision for you. Hallelujah. So it's important that we are connecting with those things. So God is wanting to bless Abraham with new vision. And then we see here right in the scripture, it says, I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. He says, get into a land that I will show you and I will make of you a great vision. So now the word of God begins to come forth to Abraham. I said the first level of vision comes through word. What does that mean? The word of God is the first place that God begins to impart and instill vision to you. Now, I know a lot of us are gifted. Um, I have a prophetic gift myself. Sometimes I feel like I don't need to hear the word because I hear God d directly. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, you know, God has blessed me with um, ears that really hear him very clearly. I can in tune into the Holy Spirit and really hear what God is saying. Even when I first began to walk in ministry as a young boy, I've always had the ability to just hear the voice of the Lord, but it didn't mean that I didn't need to go into the word. And even out of having that gift, that gift came from the word. Um, somebody prayed for you. Somebody released a word over you. Somewhere you heard the word. Vision never comes without the word. Now you may get a vision, but it's not God's vision. You may get a vision, but it's not the right vision. Vision never comes without the word. That's why the word of God is so important. That's why it's the foundation of everything, because it's what solidifies you. Some people are saying, well, they're, 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 they're confused. They, they, they don't understand some things that God is doing in their life. They've seen some things. They've heard some things, and they don't know what direction to take. Well, the word of God is the foundation that establishes your vision. It's the first portion of vision that God releases to you. It comes from the word. And then out of that, God can take you into the next level of vision. But you can never go into the next level of vision if you first don't receive the first level of vision, which is the word of God. We were talking about get in the word and break out Bible daily, the podcast that we started to help people get in the word. Well, why? Because we want to believe God for new vision. Well, the first prerequisite to getting new vision is to getting in the word. Somebody might say, well, I've already been, I've already read the whole Bible three times. The Bible is a book of many layers. You get some, you can get something new out of it every time. The Bible is a book that you can dive and dig up things in for a thousand lifetimes. The Bible is a book that is full of the word of life. It's full of the word of destiny. It's full of the word of your future. It's full of the word of all of the answers of the things that you're looking for. The word of God has to be the foundation. And we've got to make that a priority in our life. The minute that God begins to build the word of God into your life, the minute he starts to stir those things, I guarantee you, you're going to receive promotion. Every new level of the word that you go into, your life will have no choice but to shift into a new level of living. When you promote yourself, you promote yourself by deciding to get in the word on a new level. And out of that, your life has no choice but to be promoted. Because things happen in the spirit first. And when you receive in the spirit what you need, Eventually, you're going to grow out of that place that you're in. You're going to grow out of that thing. You won't even be able to fit in it. We started getting in the Word on a daily basis. And we started receiving the Word of God on a new level. And it only took two weeks before God promoted our entire ministry, shifted us, launched us into a new facility. Well, I, I didn't know why God was moving on me so heavily to get in the word in that season. But how many know he was preparing to release some new things? 
God, on the other side of this coronavirus, God is preparing to release some new things to you. He's preparing to release some new things to the church as well. But he can't do that if we don't get what we need to hold those things. God releases new blessing on new levels of his word. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. We're going to move on because I don't want to keep you guys too much longer. So uh, the next level of vision, the next level of vision is sight. Hallelujah. The next level of vision is sight. And out of that, we're going to go into Genesis chapter 13, verse 1. This is the next chapter. We can see where God released different levels of vision to Abraham. And it says, And the Lord said unto Abraham, After that lot was separated from him, Lift up now thy eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed in the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. So, praise the Lord. God begins to release vision to Abraham. And now Abraham is no longer just hearing the word, but now he's seeing it. So, first of all, God wants to release vision to you through word. Through the word, through the anointed word of God becomes the foundation of your vision. And then the promotion of that is sight. A God can release vision to you in dreams. He can release vision to you in vision form. But he wants you to begin to look at those things before you walk into it. Before you ever step into a new place, a new place of promotion, into a new place of vision, before you are walking in those things, you've got to see it first. You've got to hear it first, then you've got to see it, and then you step into it. And then you step into it. So you... Hear it in the preceding part and then you see it before you and then you step into it and you're now you're living in it currently. Come on, somebody. You're living now currently in the vision that God formerly spoke. So past, present, future. You see the connection there. You see the parallel. So God speaks to you in the past about where he's taking you. And then you see it and then you step into it. And now you're living in vision. But that's not where it stops. Let's go into the next level of vision for, for our close. The last level of vision, really quickly, you guys, is going to be revelation. Revelation vision. This is what I want to talk about. So revelation vision is the last level of vision. And then we're going to close. Let's go to Genesis 15 real quick. And it says here, And after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, wait with, wilt thou give me? What will you give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is my heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take an effort of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old. Listen to this. And a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Hallelujah. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another. But the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcass, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. 
And lo, an hour of great darkness, an hour of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for four hundred years. Now, there's a lot of things I want you guys to get in this before we close really quickly. I want y'all to get this. Now, listen, the third level of vision, revelation, the level of vision that God was releasing to Abraham was of the distant future. Come on. He was releasing to Abraham the plan, the promise, the future of his bloodline, the future of his heir, uh, the future of his household. Hallelujah. I hear the Holy Spirit. God wants to release to us a greater vision. The greater vision is that prophetic vision. The greater vision is that word of the Lord that is going to secure not just your foundation, but the foundation of everyone following after you. This is the type of vision that God is trying to release to the church. But it comes in that progression. Now watch this. Before God could release to Abraham that level of vision, there was a prerequisite. Because when Abraham came to him and he was doubtful, he said, Lord, how do I know that these visions that you're sharing with me, how do I know that this word that you're releasing to me is true, that it's going to come to pass? Some of you guys are in that position. Some of you guys are coming to the Lord and you're asking him, God, how do I know this is really going to happen? God, you've given me these promises. God, you released these things to me. How do I know for sure? Some of us have doubts. Some of us, even in hearing the word of the Lord, there may, it may have been a season where God released a great word to you and in that moment you received it and you believed it but you walked away from that place and as you walked away the faith and strength that you had in that word might have diminished over time challenges came up to test that word and now you're standing in a place where you're you're just really not sure you're just really not sure whether or not God is going to bring this thing to pass. Just like Abraham came to him. God came to Abraham with miraculous signs and wonders and released vision into his life. Yet still Abraham doubted in some moments and in some places. And he came to God and he said, look, how do I know for sure this is going to happen? How do I know for sure this promise is going to come to pass? And out of that, God said to Abraham, Here's how I'm going to release to you the greater vision. Here's how you're going to be able to gain access of the future of your household. Church, here's how you're going to gain access to the future of your generation. Those of us in the coronavirus, here's how we're going to gain access to the future, the, the longevity, the livelihood, the, the, the future of this world, this life, you're going to gain access the same way that God called Abraham to get in position to receive, come on, to get in position to receive the greater vision. He said to Abraham, take an effort because what I can't, what I want to release to you on this level is a prophetic word, is a prophetic promise based on the blood of my son Jesus Christ what I can't what I want to release to you on this level of vision can't come to you but through the blood of Jesus so Abraham so God called on Abraham to make a sacrifice and that sacrifice represented the shed blood of Christ even in a time preceding Christ's death burial and resurrection come on somebody so it was only through the blood of Jesus that God was allowed to release this prophetic vision, the prophetic vision of the nation. And God wants to release a prophetic vision concerning our nation. He wants to release a prophetic vision of our world today. He wants to release that to us. And it's only out of that, through the blood of Christ, that He can release that to you. God wants to release a prophetic vision for your family. He wants to release the prophetic vision, the foundation that he's going to establish your bloodline on beginning with you. The foundation uh, that your children will stand on and that your children's children will stand on. That's beginning with you. What flows from your house is going to flow from 
this generation into the next generation. What God wants to release to the church, what he wants to release to us is going to flow through this generation into the next generation, but it must come through the blood of Jesus. So God said to Abraham, get an effort, make a sacrifice. Now watch this. I'm going to show you church where we are today in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of quarantine and pandemic. Abraham went and he got that sacrifice. It says here in the scripture. And he went and he got the effort and he, and he got the and he got the Ephraim and God began to divide the sacrifice. Watch this. The vision that God is about to release to you in this next season, this next level is going to require little of you and more of God. I hope somebody caught that. The vision that God is going to release to you in this next season is going to require little of you and more of God. Somebody say you're doing too much. You're doing too much. God wants to release something into your life. And now this is a season where he's kind of set us. He's kind of allowed us to be sat down. I want to encourage you in this season to take it easy and rest. Don't try to do too much outside of preparing what God is about to release to you, because what God is going to do in this next season is going to come from his throne. It's going to come from his hand. This is his portion. This is his part. And when God is ready for you to step in and make the moves that he's calling you to make, he will let you know. Somebody listening into this is feeling uh, anxious, has been feeling anxious and asking God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? It's easy when you're sitting around the house to get anxious. It's easy when you're sitting and doing nothing to get anxious. And you're used to having your hands on something. You're used to being busy. But this is a season of acceleration. Everything that God is doing in this season is behind the scenes. He's accelerating. He's building up potential momentum. And we're going to see that in the following season. And there's going to come a place where God is going to say, okay, now it's time for you to do. But if we haven't rested in the season of rest, then we're going to be tired out and exhausted in the season of do in the season of go, in the season of build, where God has now shown us the vision and now he's broken the sacrifice of Christ in our life and now he's ready for us to go forth and walk out what he's shown us. Because in the next scene, Abraham gets up and he tries to help God with the sacrifice. God said, no, this is my part. This is my piece. This is what I do. It says right here, take an effort of three years and a she goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And Abraham took unto him all these things and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another, but the birds he divided not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham went to drive them away. What happened next? Abraham went to drive them away and God put Abraham to sleep. I submit to you that many of us are in a season of sleeping. It's a rest that God has laid upon us because there is a work that he's doing behind the scenes that we cannot do. Mind you, there is a season where he's calling us to step up and put our hands to the plow. But right now is a season of preparation. Get yourself ready and get in position for what God is about to do. Rest and take advantage of the season of rest. Rest by faith knowing that God is going to do some great things. And collect yourselves to prepare for what God is about to put in our hands in this next season. And I'm going to close with this. Part of the vision that God wants to release to our church is a greater level of love, a greater perspective of love, a greater theology of God's love. He wants us to be able to begin to see our lives, ourselves, and our world through His eyes, through the eyes of mercy and grace, through the eyes of love, through the eyes of heaven. We've got to stop walking and living out of our own limited love but we've got to begin to be able to grab a hold of and harness the love of God in this next season 
for our church, for our homes, for our ministries, for our families. We've got to get a hold of this thing and we've got to begin to be able to walk in love on new and greater levels. That's what God is calling us to do. Hallelujah. So in closing, I want to ask you this question and I'm going to give you guys some homework. I want you to examine these things in your life and begin to pray and ask God about these things in your life. Last week we talked about God breaking our perspective. We talked about Him breaking our mindset. We talked about Him breaking our theology. And with that, I, I want us this week to begin to pray and ask God for His perspective in these four areas. I want you to examine your life, examine your mindset, examine how you think about things, and begin to open up the doors and let God into your heart on a new level. Begin to open the doors and, and, and let God into your heart in a new way, into those areas that you've closed off, into those rooms that you've sealed shut that you have not allowed Him in. Hallelujah. Begin to open up your heart and allow God to come into some new places. Allow Him to illuminate light in some new areas so that you can see in ways that you may have not seen before. Four things that I want you guys to pray and examine this week. Number one, how do you see God? This is a time and an hour for us to collect ourselves and reevaluate our relationship with our Creator. Reevaluate our relationship with our Father. Reevaluate our relationship with the Lord. Ask yourself, how do you see God? How do you see the church? And how is your theology? How do you see God? What is your theology? How do you look at God? Do you see Him as a loving giving God? Do you believe He is a God that wants to heal you? Do you believe He's a God that wants to deliver you? You may think these things, but do you really believe them? Examine your heart. And I'm going to pray and believe God that He would help us to examine our hearts this week. Number two, how do you see the world? What's your worldview? What's your world perspective? Do you see the world from a judgmental perspective? Do you see the world from a small vision perspective? Or can you embrace how God sees the world? We talked last week about Peter, how God had to change Peter's world vision. Peter's perspective of the gospel was limited to the Jews and God had to say, no, I have created this gospel. I've, I've commissioned this gospel to go out to the ends of the earth for every man, woman, and child, and even to the Gentiles. It was that perspective that made that that was broken in Peter that allowed the gospel to flow forth to us today. How do you see the world? Ask yourself this question, number 3. How do you see your life? How do you see your life? Are you living in a glass house where there's a glass ceiling and you can only go so far or are you expanding your vision of your life? Are you able to expand your vision of your life? Are you able to see yourself walking in some new places? Are you able to step out in faith and allow God to take you wherever He desires you to go? Or are you stuck in small thinking? Is your life stuck in one place that God can't, He has no room to expand you? Holla, you know my wife, she, she always, she's always challenging me to expand my thinking. Just when I feel like I've arrived, God uses her to challenge me, to expand my thinking, to expand my perspective. There's always a new place to go. There's enough levels, come on, for you to reach everyone for a lifetime. There's no place that God wants you to plateau in. Hallelujah. God wants to continually in increase you. The Bible says His mercy and His grace and endures forever. And He wants to take us to each new level and each new place. And the last but not least, how do you see yourself? What is your self perspective? You want to take the lens of yourself and examine. Are you seeing yourself through the eyes of God? Are you seeing yourself through the love of God? Because how you see yourself is also going to be how you see others as well. Father God, I just pray and I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, as you are helping us expand our vision. I thank you, Lord God, that you're helping us 
to step out and break out into some new places in our lives. I pray, Lord God, and I thank you, Lord God, that as you seek to release prophetic vision to us in this season, in this season of download, I pray, Lord God, that you would give us a heart to hear, ears to hear the word of the Lord that concerns us. In Jesus, almighty name, I pray. I pray and I thank you, Lord God, for delivering us, Lord God. Deliver us from small vision, from small thinking. Deliver us, Lord God, from limited thinking. I pray, Father God, that you would break every vow that we've made of ourselves, that we've sworn that we wouldn't change this or that we wouldn't change that. I pray, Lord God, that you break those vows in Jesus' almighty name. I pray, Lord God, that you become the lead of our life. I pray that you become our shepherd, Lord God. That we're not finding ourselves leading ourselves, that we're not finding ourselves trying to control ourselves, but that we've released the controls to you. I pray, Lord God, that you would strengthen us and help us to walk in a new and greater perspective. In Jesus' almighty name, I pray and I thank you. Well, God bless you guys. Thank you for joining us this morning. Those of you guys who are watching this, if you've missed it or if your feed has frozen, I know that Facebook um, is probably really overloaded these Sundays where we have a lot of services going on with a lot of different churches. Um, I want to let you know that we will be rebroadcasting this service at 6 p.m. tonight so you can see it again. And to those of you guys who missed it or maybe you missed a portion of this due to some freezing on the line, I noticed that Facebook was having a little bit of a hard time. It's a little overloaded, I can imagine. Every church on the planet is trying to have service right now. Just uh, don't forget, you guys, that you can also watch our services on YouTube, Periscope, and our new platform, Breakout TV. If you want to check out Breakout TV, www.breakoutcentercleveland.com. We're going to be having some different... Uh, Productions going on throughout the week to keep you guys connected and um, With that really quickly real quick before you guys go. I, I did have an announcement I will be doing a new book launch soon if you guys want to connect with that launch and see the progress That I've been making with the book. We're going to be preparing to Send out the promotions for that and also relaunching some of my previous titles so that you guys can know the materials that are available to you guys there on Amazon um, if you want to connect with that, you want to connect with my Twitter account at Michael D underscore Watson. Michael D underscore Watson. I'm giving exclusive updates on not just the material, but also um, the title and uh, many other things as well. God bless you guys. God bless you guys this afternoon. Have a good rest of the day. Check out the website www.breakoutcentercleveland.com for updates on everything that we're doing. And um, don't forget about Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. We're going to be having breakout school and we're going to be teaching on emotional healing. Emotional healing. Those of you guys who have been through some traumas, I believe that God wants to touch you on this Tuesday. Don't forget also to visit us on Thursdays on the lines at 6.30 p.m. Our team puts together a great prayer. Shout out to Shanae Williams, Deborah, Sister Denise, and all of those who help support us with holding that prayer line open. Also, um, um, also Elaine Williams, um, those of you guys who are all connected with us and supporting us in this hour. Thank you guys for your giving, for your seed, and everything that you've been doing to help us out in this season with the ministry. Look forward to connecting with you guys in our new facility when we get back into the church. But in the meantime, we'll have church online if we can help it. And uh, I guess that's all. Have a good rest of the day. Spend some time with your family. Find some time to pray and worship the Lord this day. And have a good rest of the week. We would love to connect with you. Visit us online at www.breakoutcentercleveland.com.